morning on board Cascade. If you've just joined us, well, we're anchored off of Mykonos, one of the most famous islands in all of Greece. And last night, well, we let our hair down on this party island. Over the past few weeks, though, we've taken you off the beaten path by sea on a Beneteau Sense 51, thanks to Navigare Yachting. <laughs> showing you some of the more untouched and less crowded islands near Mykonos that ooze natural beauty and in some cases are far more cheaper than Mykonos. Whoa. Oh my God. So if you've missed those episodes, go back and check them out. Also, we've just started a private Facebook group for Patreons. So if you want to join us and support us, I'll leave a link in the description. But on this episode, we're going to answer your questions. The do's and don'ts here in Greece. But we're happy to move, but you got to why we have no fear jumping in the sea with 200 meters below us and we're also going to literally sail you to a trendy venetian built island wow bloody beautiful right now we're anchored off of mykonos which is part of the kakladas a group of islands you can see here in this region we're currently on the west coast so this will make it easy for us to sail to syros which is just 20 nautical miles away so rise and shine everyone our bedroom is an absolute pigsty so i'm just going to try and clean up our room make the place feel a little bit more civilized does she notice Let's dust off that hangover with a big bowl of carbs. Alright, who's having pasta? 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 Chris did, however, have a really cool pasta technique to share with us. Tell us about your trick. So apparently, an old Italian lady showed me this. This is how you spread your pasta around before you put the water in, so when it cooks, it slowly all falls in at the same time. So I'll give you a demo. Are you ready? Oh, I'm sort of. No, yeah. Okay, ready? Pretty close, but not quite, but it sits like this, right? Yeah. And as it cooks, it, it all falls in and spins in at the same time. Really? Apparently. Are we putting salt water in that? Yeah, I, I cooked with salt water the other day. It makes it pretty salty, but I'd go half and half. Have you done it with salt? No, I've never actually done this before, but you can cook pasta in salt water. So we're going to do a half, half trick, half salt water, half fresh water. See how it turns out. Right. So there's half salt water in there. This is a great little tip and trick if you're wanting to conserve the fresh water in your tanks, especially if you don't have a water maker on board and it also gives so much more flavor to your pasta as well. So hard to see from the moment we arrive. Cornelia, you are one who will survive. With a bit of food in our bellies, spirits were rising. And after the calmest of days recently, we were really excited to see more than just a couple of knots on our instruments. You guys ready? Yeah. So the sails went up. We were utilizing those electric winches. Yeah, it looks better. Electric's so good. It's so easy, eh? Hey? And we were flying into the port of Syros. Cool. Yeah, all right, ready? Yeah. And while we were coming in hot, I quickly went down to clean up all the mess I'd made cooking. I am a messy cook. Uh, I do this so that when we arrive, we can just hit the ground running into town. But as we got closer to the port, we realized that the wind and the waves from ferries and traffic continuously coming and going could get pretty nasty in this bustling harbor. So instead, we opted for an abandoned port a little further out, which doesn't get slammed by wakes as much. And because the concrete infrastructure isn't used anymore, it's become a popular spot for boaties. We're just gonna need a ton of fenders. I need a middle one. Yeah, we can 
put them on in a second. Alright, we tied on good? Do we got fenders in, enough fenders in there or not? There's three. Uh, I think we need a couple more in here. Fenders are protected from the Yeah, it's protected. Board. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's been a pretty wild 12 months since first learning how to sail. <laughs> I said the sticker flakes is going everywhere. <laughs> it's so hard to believe how far we've come together in that time. Sailing in Australia was our first ever experience sailing in general. So this has literally opened up so many doors for us. In Australia, some days we would sail for like seven hours. We'd have to do overnight passages quite constantly. It is just so cool here. It's just so different to Australia. So I think the best thing about sailing in Greece is the fact that all the islands are so close. Like literally a hop, skip and a jump and you're in another island. You could sail for two, three hours bunny hop your way around. There's no real sleep deprivation. The tides here are 20 centimeters. Some of the ones that we're experiencing in Brisbane on a daily basis were two, two meters. And so we were constantly having to do mathematical equations. The swell was more intense. For those who aren't boaties, the problem with big tides is if you don't get your maths right, and don't leave enough room under the keel, you could hit the seabed. This is called a grounding. Hence why we have found sailing in Greece a lot less stressful because it doesn't have those monster tides. But to answer this question, how are you guys feeling that the Aegean Sea has not any dangerous creatures at all? Well, back home, there were a heap more sharks and marine life. For example, there are around 20 shark attacks a year in Australia, according to Google. While over here in Greece, there have been just 15 in the last 170 years with just one fatality. So we felt a lot safer swimming in the sea here. One thing that did bite though here in Greece, I had issues using some of my usual banking and social media apps. For example, on Instagram, I lost the ability to post reels and both John and I weren't able to access music either, which sucked. So Rachel told me about her Surfshark VPN and it was amazing. I downloaded Surfshark on the app store straight away and changed my IP address to an Australian one. So I was able to tell my phone that it was virtually back in Australia, even though I was physically still here in Greece and I did get all my app features back. So when Surfshark reached out to me to sponsor this video, I was genuinely so excited to share this news with you because having a VPN saved us from leaving you guys in the lurch on social media. It's also great for a ton of other perks like accessing otherwise blocked libraries on Netflix. So you're able to watch all your favorite shows in regions all around the world. If you'd like to sign up, use my code Christina's, you'll get 83% off plus three extra months free. I'll leave a link in the description below. Another really important tip, if you're used to seeing moorings look like this. Wind up to 34 knots, monohar up to 35 meters. Well, here in Greece, they can be old looking jerry cans that look disused. For us, we learned the hard way. We saw other yachties parking up amongst the containers and assumed the moorings were disused. I think this is just how it is here, right? We anchored near one at 7 p.m. at night, thinking the day was over and we were in a good position when we got caught out when the owner of this blue jerry can returned. We're happy to move, but you gotta give us a chance. So I hope you got something out of those tips. For now though, we're about to walk into the main town of Syros, which is called Edmopoli, and it's right over there in the distance. So we just parked up Cascade and we're walking down to the town. Beautiful little marina nearby with these cute little boats. This town is so pretty. It's got a real Venetian vibe, completely different to any other Greek island that we have seen on our trip. It's been a big day sailing. It's around 3 p.m. in the afternoon now, so we'll probably go for a walk for a couple of hours, and then we're gonna grab a bite to eat. People first started settling here in Syros 5,000 years ago in the early Bronze Age. It was home to the great philosopher, Phorekitis, who became the teacher of Pythagoras in the sixth century. But constant pirate invasions and barbarian raids devastated Syros over and over, forcing residents to move to the top of the hill. Over hundreds of years, Turks, Persians, Romans, Franks and Greeks have all settled here, leaving behind their cultural traces. It's such a unique little town. It's really picturesque. It's absolutely beautiful. Even the roads are marble here. Wow.
and in the 1800s, the port became the centre of trade, the most important commercial harbour in Greece. It's very industrial and it feels a little Venetian here and it's just really cool that it's so different. So we're just having a walk around. The town square is behind me. I think there might be a wedding happening right now. But its most prosperous period lasted until German troops arrived in World War II. Today, it's a bustling, quirky town with so much personality and the gelato from Django Yum. is off the charts. That is so good. Have you noticed they've got like tats and like they're really dressed alternatively and really hip, hip stuff. So guys, I have some news. I guess it's positive and negative. I didn't get the job, that job that I went for the other day. The laptop is currently sitting on the binoculars box. It went down to myself and another person, so they ended up getting it, which is a shame. But at the same time, the positive is I have more time to spend editing and filming and working on our channel. You win some, you lose some. Lost that one, but it obviously was not meant to be. This was obviously just like a three month contract it was nothing big but it was just a shame because you know we're hoping to to save a bit of money uh, so that we can go off and and do this again anyway that was my first job interview in about a decade so it was good practice regardless you know i think the one annoying thing about it was though rach john and chris have gone out to explore the island and i was left here for this finishing off of the job interview. Can they just not bloody send it to me by an email just to say, sorry, you're a little unsuccessful. So if visiting Syros, you can tie up to this abandoned marina. It is completely free for us to stay. Having all these fenders here on this marina is extremely important because as the ferries go out, the massive wake just pushes the boat into this concrete slab. But we're about to head off. We're about to bring the lines in and we're going to an island called Kia. Okie dokie. I'm going to slip this one first. Yeah, you untie just pull it through. Yep. I'm going to bow thrust it out. Yep. Okay. I'm going to slip this line. John's going to bow thrust her out. And then Chris is going to slip that back line. Ready? Make it to Patty. We won't have a channel otherwise. Oh, yep, did a split. Well done, team. I think Cheeks made the best cream ever, yeah? The best time to sail in Greece is, of course, summer, but the shoulder season isn't bad either. Although the water is a little chilly still, the end of May and early June for us was absolutely spectacular. Another one of my favorite things about sailing here in Greece is the color of the water. So crystal blue. Some of the anchorages that we have stayed in have been absolutely mesmerizing, majestic, magical, just breathtaking. <laughs> Work. Yeah! Woo! So we just went to Syros and I just got off the phone to my mum. It turns out that my background, my great great grandmother was born in Syros. I am blown away. That was definitely one of my favourite islands here in Greece. I definitely wish we had more time on the island and maybe I can learn a little bit more about the history and family ties that we may have there still. So my background is obviously Greek. 
Uh, and I'm a bit Maltese, which means I'm also probably a little bit Spanish. I was born in Australia. My mum and dad were born in Australia, but my grandparents were from overseas, except for my dad's mum. She was Australian. I definitely noticed that the locals loved that I could speak a little bit of Greek. So if you're visiting, I would encourage you to learn a little bit. It means so much to the people here. So I'll give you a few little tips if you're visiting. Yasas. Yasas means like hello. So yasas. Yasu. If you're going to a restaurant and you like chicken, instead of saying chicken, you could say kota. And if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Bye bye.